Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I uh, hope you guys are ready to, uh, to worship wherever you are. And uh, I know I am pretty excited and I'm also excited about possibly seeing you guys in class next weekend. Uh, that's the plan is for us to teach in-house. So really hoping to see you there. But if I don't, I'm gonna keep doing this for you too. Uh, so at least you're getting something and we'll continue to pray over this. So today I'm gonna run over quick about Samuel. Samuel was uh, the last and probably one of the greatest or most, most effective judges. And you remember we were talking about judges before, right? There were people that were, that were uh, called by God to lead Israel back to him after they've struggled and been oppressed uh, under other people. Um, so here we have Samuel. Now this is a time um, that, uh, you know, we're about 200 years into the cycle of judges. Um, Eli was next to last, and he's like their chief priest, right? And he has his two sons, so they're in the temple doing things. And we have this man, Elkanah, and his, he has two wives, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about Hannah. So his other wife has ha given uh, him several children, but Hannah was barren. She couldn't have a child. Um, and you probably recognize this theme from other stories in the Bible because um, it's a it's a pretty powerful message. You know, you have this woman who, uh, through her life, even though she's been married and trying, she just could not have a child. Uh, and that's weighed heavily on her, of course. And the other wife was not kind to her. She kind of rubbed it in her face and was like, you know, look, I have kids and you don't, you know, and you're kind of lame. So, you know, that's obviously caused some torment for her and, you know, make her feel just not as good. <clears throat> so she can't have children and she's been struggling and it's been weighing on her. And so she goes to the temple where Eli is and she used this prayer and I'm going to read it for you. It's brief, right? So Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. And in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. <clears throat> I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went away and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. <clears throat> so she's pouring her heart out to God. And I want you to notice one thing here. Because uh, you think about prayer, and a lot of people do things differently, right? Uh, and she's praying, she's pouring her heart out, and she's, she's having a conversation with God. It's for God to hear and nobody else. Um, and I think Eli was there, so used to hearing people come into the temple and pray out loud and, and you know, um, do their worship audibly, you know, that, where everybody can hear it. Um, you know, sometimes you get the impression that it's just showy prayer, right, that we, that we come across later on in the New Testament. But, so she's having this deep, heart-rending conversation <clears throat> with God, excuse me. <clears throat> She's asking him, just please, you know, just give me a son and he'll be yours. I just want to have him. I want to be able to, to contribute to the world, right? To have a child. Um, so at least I, I know I've, I've produced them and fruitful. And so, and Eli is there and he tells her, you know, may God grant you your wish. Uh, grant you your prayer, I should say. <clears throat> and, you know, as you might expect, since we have two books of Samuel in this Bible, and she, uh, then, you know, she had a child, right? The child's name was Samuel. So she's made him, she's dedicated him to serve the Lord. And, you know, you hear 
a lot about things, you know, people promising God, you know, if you give me this, I will do A, B, C, and D for you. And, and you know, uh, not always sure if it's going to follow through. Um, but in this pattern, we know now that this is the last of the judges. And we've heard a similar thing, right, with uh, Samson and his mother. So we know what's coming, right? <clears throat> And so, in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. <clears throat> and she does what she says. She takes him up and she de dedicates him to the Lord. She actually, after she's done nursing him, she weans him, right? She talks about weaning. And brings him to Eli and says, I want you to raise him up to be a man of God, to serve God. <clears throat> and as we go through this, because I really want to kind of do a few things with Samuel uh, over the next few weeks, whether it be right here on these videos or in this classroom around our table. Um, but we're going to talk about these guys because Eli has his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, as priests in, in the temple. Um, and, you know, there are certain expectations of behaviors about these priests and stuff. So we'll deal with that later. Right now, just the miracle here that we're talking about with with Hannah not being able to have a child, pouring her heart out to God, um, having a conversation that was between her and God and for nobody's ears at that time. Um, and she gets what she asked for. She petitions the Lord and she gets what she needs. And then she follows through with her promise. So she prayed, she had faith, and she fulfilled an oath. So that was the honorable thing. But I want you to uh, consider her prayer and reflect on your own prayer life. Um, how do you pray to God? Are you sitting quietly on a chair or a bed? Do you stand? Do you kneel? It doesn't really matter, right? Um, what matters is that deep pouring out to God true self there's nothing in you you can hide from him so you may try you may pray in your own mind and you kind of dig around for the things that you want to say or you know that you want to put out there but really he knows it so just share it if you freely share what you're feeling you freely share what you're hoping for what you're afraid of what you're thankful for uh, what brings you joy share those things with God you share them openly, and that's part of developing your relationship with God. Uh, that is going to, as you go down on your journey, uh, allow you to bear a lot of fruit. Because when you're open to Him, you're also going to be open to hear Him. And you're, you're going to be open to receive what He has for you. So, be as Hannah. Pour your heart out to God. Bring him what's troubling you along with what you're grateful for um, and have faith. And I would caution though, be careful about just, you know, making promises. I don't want to do that part too much. We can talk about that later when we can actually have dialogue about it. Uh, I think it's important that we have back and forth with stuff like that. Um, but general concepts like this, you know, be prayerful and, uh, and I look forward to exploring the rest of Samuel with you guys right here if we can, okay? So I'll continue to pray for you guys. Love you guys so much. Um, have a blessed week, and we'll see you soon.